our channel and welcome to Blue Room Reading. Reading. Remember everyone, this is Dr. Seuss week, okay? So today we have part two of Dr. Seuss. But before we get started with the story, remember this is rock series week as well. So we have two more creative rocks that Sayana wants to share. And Justice has joined in. He's going to share with us origami. He loves to make creative things also out of paperwork. All right, you're up. I have these two rocks for this one. I made a heart and I colored it in and dots around it. And for the outside, I did the purple. And then I did this. I painted this one for yellow and then purple. And then here's the blue bow I painted. And then on the bottom for the wrapper, it is green. Thank you. So I like to make origami things out of paper. This is a crane, it's a type of bird, and this is a ninja star. I make these a lot, you can learn it too. Very good guys. Okay, okay. oh, glasses. I got my glasses on already, so I am ready to read. Good job. All right, today we're gonna read If I Ran the Zoo by Dr. Seuss. If I Ran the Zoo, all right. I'll start if that's okay with you guys. Yeah. yeah. All righty. It's a pretty good zoo, said young Gerald McGrew, and the fellow who runs it sounds proud of it too. But if I ran the zoo, said young Gerald McGrew, I make a few things that's just what I do. The lions and tigers, that kind of stuff they have up there now and are not quite good enough. You see things like these in just any old zoo. They're awfully old fashioned. I want something new. So I'd open a cage, I unlock every pen, let the animals go and start over again. And somehow or other, I think I could find some beasts of a much more unusual kind. A four footed lion, it's not much of a beast. The one in my zoo will have 10 feet at least, five legs on the left and five more on the right. The people will stare and they'll say, what a sight. This zookeeper, new keeper, Gerald's quite keen. That's the gold darndest lion I have ever seen. Look at this lion. Yes, like all these feet. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. All right. You guys want a lion like that? No. You, I can bite one. No. Okay, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it in Dr. Seuss land. My new zoo, McGrew Zoo, will make people talk. My new zoo, McGrew Zoo, will make people gawk. And the strangest eye creatures that ever did walk. I'll get for my zoo a new sort of a hen, which roosts in another hen's top, top knot, and then another one roosts in the top knot of his, and another in his, and another in his, and so forth, and upward, and onward. Gee whiz! But somebody's getting sleepy. It's working. But that's just a start. I'll do better than that. They'll see me. They'll see me next day in my zookeeper's hat. Come into my zoo with an elephant cat. They'll be so surprised. They'll all swallow their gum. They'll ask when they see my strange animals come. Where do you suppose he gets things like that from? His animals all have such very odd faces. I'll bet he must hunt them in rather odd places. And that's what I'll do, said young Gerald McGrew. If you want to catch beasts you don't see every day, you have to go places quite out of the way. You have to go places no others can get to. You have to get cold and you have to go get wet too. Up past the North Pole where the frozen winds squeal, I'll go and I'll hunt in my Skeagle Mobile and bring back a family of what do you know? And that's how my new zoo, McGrew Zoo, will grow. I'll hunt in the mountains of Zomba Matat with helpers who all wear their eyes at a slant and capture a, flying, a fine fluffy bird called the Bustard who only eats custard with sauce made of mustard. And also a very fine beast called the Flustered, who only eats mustard with sauce made of custard. I'll catch them in caves and I'll catch them in books and brooks. I'll catch them in crannies. I'll catch them in nooks that you don't read about in geography books. I'll catch them in countries that no one can spell, like the country of Moda Fapora Fapel. In a country like that, if a hunter is clever, 
he'll hunt up some beasts that you never saw ever. Whew. Tongue twisters. Who wants to take over? Me. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. A load of five goats with a family of jo jokes whose feet are like cows but wear squirrel skin coats and sit down like dogs but have voices like goats expecting they can't sing the very high notes. <laughs> and then I'll go down the wilds of Nantucket and capture a family of lungs in a bucket. Then people will say, now I look that now I like that boy he His new zoo, Mick Grew Zoo, is growing back by leaps. He captures them wild and he capture, captures them meek. He captures them slim and he capture, captures them sleek. What do you suppose he, he will capture next week? <laughs> I'll capture one tiny. I'll capture one cute. I'll capture a deer that no hunter would shoot. A deer that's so nice he could sleep in at your bed if it weren't for those horns that he was on his head. That, that he has on his head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to show it? Yeah. <laughs> Look at those. All the other people. The Zoo City. And speaking of hordes that are just a bit queer, I'll bring back a very old family of deer. A father, a mother, two sisters, a brother whose horns are connected from one to the other. Whose horns are so mixed they can't tell them a tell them apart, can't tell where they end and can't tell where they start. Each deer is mighty puzzled. He's never yet found uh, if his horns are hers or the other way round. I'll capture them fat and I'll capture them scrawny. I'll capture a scraggle flip mulligatani. <laughs> a, a high stepping animal fast as the wind from the blistering sands of the desert of Zin. This beast is the beast that the brave chieftains chieftains ride when they want to go fast to find some place to hide. A mulligatani is fine for my zoo, and so is Chieftain. I'll bring one back too. Good job. Mm -hmm. In the far western part of southeast North Dakota lives a very fine animal called the Lota. Oh, I yelled. <laughs> But I'll capture one who is even much finer in the northeastern west part of South Carolina. When people see him, they will say, Now, by thunder, this new zoo, Mick Grew Zoo, is really a wonder. So much, so much. <laughs> Look at that. The blue hair. Nice smile. are quite friendly, but still, in some lands, some beasts are too dangerous to catch with their hands. For those that are ugly and vicious and mean, and mean, I'll build a bad animal catching machine. It's rather expensive to build such a kit, but with it, but with it, a hunter can never get bit. Good job. Thank you. Uh -huh. Oh, you're going to pass it to Justin? Yeah. All right, Justice. <clears throat>
Azure should have have bugs, so I'll capture a th thrill, thrill, a thrill, who legs are snarled up in a terrible snarl. <clears throat> and then I'll go out and capture some chug, some knee nodder, mean shooter, being shooter bugs. I'll go to the Africa island of Yurka and bring back a tizzle topped muffle tuft mazurka, a kind of can canary, canary, a canary with quite a tall throat. His neck is so long if he swallows it out. For breakfast the, the the day of April, they say, it has to go down such a very long way th that it gets to his stomach the 15th of May. Our bag, a big bug who was very surprising, a feller who has a propeller for rising, and zooming around, making cross-country hops from Texas to Boston with at least two hops. Now that sort of thing for a bug, it just stops. And when I caught him, then the next thing you know, I'll go and I'll capture a, a wild tic-tac-toe with X that win and with zeros that lose, he'll look he look mighty good in 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 this zoo's in the zoo of me grooves. I'll bring back a guest a huh? oh gusset a gherkin, a gasket, and also a, a gooch from the wilds of nat, nats, natasket. Natasket. Natasket, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, eight Persian princes will carry the basket, but what their names are, I don't know, so don't ask it. <laughs> In a cave in Khartoum lives a beast called the Natch that no other hunter's been able to catch. Mm -hmm. He's hidden for years in his cave with the pouts, and no one's been able to to, to make him count come out. But I'll coax him out with a wonderful meal that's that's cooked by my cooks in the in my cooker mobile. They'll fix up a dish that is just to his taste, three kitchen croquets made with made of library paste, then sprinkled with peanut shucks, pickled and spiced, then baked at 600 degrees, and then iced. It's a mighty hard cooking to cook up fresh, to, to cook up such feats, but that's, that's how the new Zoo McGrew Zoo gets, gets beats. I'll go to the faraway mountains of Topsk, near the river of Nopsk, and I'll bring back in Ops a sort of, of a kind of a thing of a Bobsk, <laughs> who only eats rhubarb, and corn on the kobobsk cobs. Then people will flock to my zoo in a mobsk. McGrew, they will say, what a wonderful jobsk. He hunts with such a vim, and he hunts with, with such a vinegar. Vigor. Vigor. His new zoo, McGrew Zoo, gets bigger and bigger. <laughs> Speaking of birds, there's a Russian pull out, pull out, Poluski, who heads, 
who head ski is red ski and belly is blue ski. I'll get one of them for my Zuski Mick Gruski. Oh, after this. Okay. Then the whole town will gasp why this boy never sleeps. No keeper before ever kept what he keeps. There's no telling what that young fellow will do and then just sh show them I'll sail to the cut true and bring back in it catch a pre and a prue a <laughs> Nurkle, a nerd, and a seer sucker too. Nice. <laughs> All of them are next to their names. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pass it over to Moppy. Great job, guys. Thank you. Is everybody still awake? We're almost done. This is a tongue twister. You guys are doing a great job. I'll hunt in the jungles of Hipponohungus and bring back a flock of wild Bipponobungus. The Bipponobungus from Hipponohungus are better than those down in Dipponodungus and smarter than those out in Nipponodungus. And that's why I'll catch them in Hipponohungus instead of those others in Nungus and Dungus. And people will say when they see these bips bounding, the zookeeper, new zookeepers, simply astounding. He travels so far that you think he would drop. When do you suppose this young fellow will stop? I don't know. Stop? Well, I should, but I won't stop until I've captured the Fizza Mawiza Madil, the world's biggest bird from the island of Guark, who only eats pine trees and spits out the bark. And boy, when I get him back home to my park, the whole world will say, young McGrew's made his mark. He's built a zoo better than Noah's whole ark. These wonderful, marvelous beasts that he chooses have made him the greatest of all of the McGruises. Wow, they all cheer. What this zoo must be worth is the gold, is the gall darnest zoo on the face of the earth. Yes, that's what I do, say young Gerald McGrew. I'd make a few changes if I ran the zoo. Here's young Gerald McGrew. We're at the end of the story. That's him there. And what a wonderful read, guys. What did you yeah. think of that? That was very hard to read. <laughs> what did you think? It was fun. It was a tongue twister, huh? Yeah. Dr. Seuss books are very fun. I remember when I was little, and they are quite tricky, so you have to follow along, but you guys did a great job. I never heard you read a Dr. Seuss book like this, so I'm proud of you, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. So again, welcome to Blue Room Reading. Tomorrow, we have another Dr. Series, number three, with another rock share and maybe an origami creation. We appreciate you. Please like and subscribe. Anything you guys want to say? Uh, thank you for watching our videos. And please like and subscribe. Bye. Bye.